new music in Thailand for wind band? Well, that's uh, that's our topic for today. <laughs> that's okay. Well, we can talk about a lot of other things too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> This is my first live action. Really? Yeah. In the whole I mean, lockdown period, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people like that invited me, but I just say no. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm very, very honored. Right. <laughs> but you've been doing quite a lot of Zoom meetings, right? I suppose. Yes. So yes. Like, there's like unlimited Zoom meetings throughout the whole lockdown period. Yes, and actually, a number of teachers have been doing Zoom teaching or other online platform teaching also because now, you know, the school started already. So, mm -hmm. but we migrated all the lecture class to online platform mm. and so we transform all the rooms we have, you know, for um, lessons and private teaching ensemble rehearsals and stuff like that. Wow. So, so almost everything is done online now. All the lecture classes are online except the private lessons and and the ensembles mm -hmm. and so we need all those spaces and rooms you know even teachers sometimes they cannot teach they're not allowed to teach in their studio because it's considered um too small um oh. because we need like distancing like one meter or two meters right yeah yeah right. choir is the most difficult because yeah that's yeah how how do you guys uh do solve that problem because that's really a big issue even yeah, so, lessons yeah so we divide the the class into smaller groups and so we so it's actually doubles the the teaching load of the teachers a little bit that they need to teach multiple groups mm -hmm. no. smaller groups yeah wow and we decided our syllabi that it has always has two plans like for example we have the the plans for teaching um the class in person and the online plan. So for example, if the government allow, um, we plan to teach you know, in person, but you know, the situation can get bad at any time. So yeah, yeah so, so that we have the plans in hand for everything. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. One more group. Okay, while well, you're sharing, I'm just gonna make a short announcement to start tonight's episode. So good evening, and thank you for tuning in to episode 18 of unboxing new music with Bun Hua. I'm Bun Hua. <laughs> and the concept of this show is to introduce and have a conversation with some of the finest composers and performers based in Singapore and or Asia on contemporary music. Each episode will feature two or three works that we listen to together with a score. And I hope you will find something interesting about how the score looks in relation to the music. The live component of this show allows for real-time audience interaction so I encourage our audience to let us know that you are there and are excited about this show by saying hello, sharing this video or asking questions. Without further ado, I would like to bring in our guest and, and a good friend of mine for tonight. He is currently Chair of Conducting and Ensemble Department at the College of Music, Mahidol University, Conductor of the Mahidol Wind Symphony and also the Assistant Music Director of the Thailand Philharmonic Orchestra. We had a great time studying together at the Wing Conducting Program in the University of Cincinnati's College Conservatory of Music. It's always a very, very long name, and I'm looking forward very much to seeing him again. Uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Tanapo Setapamana. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tanapo. Uh, good to see you, Boon. Yeah, great to this see you. It's a bit long overdue, right? Yeah, very, very long overdue. Before, before we, we go on, I would like would you tell us a little bit more about your background since it's such a interesting project that you, you just told me about? Yeah, sure. So um, I studied my undergrad um, at Mahito University where actually I'm, I've been working now. Um, so I studied um, a composition major actually. Um, and then during my study at, at the university, so I had a chance to um, conduct a number of groups. So, and that, led me to, you know, more um, interest in conducting. And so in 2009, I um, went to uh, New England Conservatory or NEC in Boston to study, uh, to pursue my master's degree in um, conducting with Mr. Charles Pelt. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went directly to um, University of Cincinnati or CCM in, in conducting. 
yeah. actually, uh, yeah, fantastic. No, actually, I, w I was I was going to ask you about your virtual background. <laughs> right, right, right. So, um, so this is the actually recent project is just launched yesterday. So this is the um, one of the biggest department stores um, in Bangkok, actually, and in front of the building, as you can see, this actually this this department store um, takes the whole block of the road, so it's very large, and so they have this um, very wide screen um, in front of the building. And they, there's you no know, space in front of the building, as you can see that, you know, sometimes they do like winter music festival in front of the building. And so they contacted us to produce some um, concert video and, you know, to put it on the screen and, and show it to the public. And so this video will, will run um, for a month. And so it's good for us to, you know, have chance to produce our work for the general public and put it in the middle of Bangkok. This is the best possible form of outreach. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, before I go on, I'd like to say some hellos. Uh, hello to Sutipong, hello to Ignatius, and hello to Leslie, who is also a Mahidor graduate. And he's teaching hi, hi, saxophone hi. here in Singapore at the Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts. Uh, so we, we talked a little bit about now your life background um, and how, how did uh, how did you decide to go to the U.S.? Because I've, I realized that, you know, in different countries in Asia, uh, there seems to be an inclination. For example, in Singapore, obviously people like to go to U.S. or U.K. because of language, um, less language barriers. And I know, for example, in Philippines or maybe in Indonesia, it's more e European. Uh, they like to go to Germany or Austria. How is it in Thailand? Yeah, so um, at Mahidon, we... Um, we've had uh, quite uh, a lot of connections with with um, international teachers because our faculty know about half, you know, fifty percent of of the faculty body is from abroad. You know, so we have contact with teachers from both Europe and and US and also other countries in Asia. But you know, back then, you know, I was, you know, start start to get interest in in um, Win ensemble music, especially because I actually really, really um, um, into the modern kind of music, and I like the color of the wind of the wind ensemble. But then, you know, I had no knowledge, um, you know, about the repertoire further than you know beyond the standard works. And then, so I started to to do some research, and then at it's at that time that I started to feel that. I was getting bored with this standard repertoire and, and what I, I was writing, you know, so I searched for, for, for a lot, of, a lot of, of music, you know. And then um, when I went to audition to a number of, of schools, you know, in the States, so I was invited to, to NEC. Um, so I, I you know, was introduced to a number of, of repertoire by you know, Mr. Pels, Charles Pels um, there. And, I was actually very, very interested in, in those kind of music. And you know, the, the audition piece was already you know, Stravinsky Octet. <laughs> you know, so that already it's a great partita. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, and then, and then he showed me the repertoire list and I, I thought, you know, this, this can be interesting. And it's maybe something that, that I was looking for, you know. And so I had a good time there. Yeah, I remember auditioning also at NEC and, and right. was really blown away. And got the phone call from Mr. Peltz, and it was a very compelling phone call. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a little bit too expensive for me at that point. Um, but um, NEC is a, is a real kind of wind ensemble, so you right. know, they don't play the, the big, um, more co symphonic wind band pieces, but right. rather more um, ensemble uh, solo part pieces. And I think today we'll talk about actually uh, one piece that is kind of in this wind ensemble tradition and one piece a little bit more wind band a little bit more lush right in terms of the orchestration great and then um as you were going through your education uh who are some of your mentors or role models you know of course so um i was suddenly inspired by my teacher mr Pulse at that time you know they actually both you know both um rehearsal technique conducting and you know uh, pedagogical tools that you know, he, he used at that time. And actually, even today, when I teach my students, I still have the 
the ideas and the techniques and you know many things that he taught me back then I still use them today you know and especially I found that I found that he his you know his teaching was the best resource you know when you know th that's the moment where you stand on the podium and there's no teacher beside you anymore you know that that and we all have that kind of moment and then you know sometimes at, at, at some point I was like wait how there's some problem that I don't know how to fix that yeah I need my teacher here right now and then but there's no teacher here right so you need to dig into your memory and, and you know think yeah if if he if, if he were here what would he say something like that you know that, that's the kind of thing yeah absolutely yeah. Um, I remember he came to Eastman uh, to conduct the win ensemble and I know the kids really love him um, yeah. and you know I never got to work with him besides the the summer class at NEC which you know the the whole technique of doing you know Beethoven 4 with the timeline is something I still do today and yeah. I think that I still, I still teach students uh, so very fond memories of Mr. Peltz and uh, a lot of his students are doing very very well so it's really a testament to his wonderful teaching yeah, same thing here. Yeah. Uh, so how, how has the training, for example, at NEC or even at CCN kind of affected your programming ideas for Mighty Dawn? Oh, uh, a lot, actually, really, really a lot. So the idea that probably if you have the book by Mr. Battisti in hand, you probably see the examples of programming that, no, I, I think it, it's based on um, Eastman with ensemble kind of programming, you know, at, at, at that time that they introduced not, um, you know, they introduced a piece that require um, different number of players, right? And so the piece, you know, the program can, can vary a lot, you know, in terms of the, the periods where the repertoire was taken from. For example, you know, some Gabrielli music, for example, and then some classical serenade, and then um, bigger pieces, sometimes standard symphonic band repertoire, sometimes the piece um, written a month ago. You know, so I actually was influenced by, by that kind of, of programming a lot because um, one thing that I feel strongly that I, um, what I need to train my students is that I want them to be able to handle any kind of music. You know, because we are in the era where, you know, you need to play a lot of, of, of music from the old time to the music written yesterday, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's very important to, for them to learn how to play um, different kind of music as much as possible and different kind of notations also that's also important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I guess over here in Singapore at the Yong Siu Conservatory, we don't have a wind band program. And mm -hmm. so um, I feel like the new music ensemble is really kind of the only other place that they get to uh, look at notation that is very unconventional, graphic notation, extended technique and really kind of pushing their boundaries. And I know like during, during the semester when they're in the ensemble, the experience might you know, vary from people to people because <laughs> some yeah. people love it, some people hate it, but it's important that they get the exposure because after that, when they see music after that, then it's not so scary for them, which is what our role is to really educate and expose them. Yeah. So what were some of your proudest um, moments with your, uh, with your group, Mahido Wind Symphony? Yeah, so I, you know, let me tell you a bit of history. So I went there um, in 2014 to start, start, started the job there. And then my first gig was to um, conduct the um, new music festival. So at Mahidon, we, we've been hosting this new music festival called TICF, Thailand International Competition Festival for, for many, many years, more than 10 years. And um, it's, it's, it's usually in July in late June or early July. And in that um, uh, festival, you know, we invited uh, guests, some very, very famous um, from all over, all over the world. And so my first concert was that um, I have, I think three weeks. So basically like six rehearsals of two hours rehearsals to prepare music um, by Augusta Reed Thomas and Bernard Rands and uh, a number of more, more composers. And they're gonna be be here also, you know. So, so we play music. No, no pressure. No pressure at all. So yeah, right. Um, yeah. So um, so that makes the tradition of 
our group a little bit that the first concert mm -hmm. is usually new music concert. That's a bit weird, but it's oh, usually that. Okay. So when freshmen just graduated from high school and they entered the, the college and the first thing they play <laughs> is new music. So, um, I mean, there, there are there's pros and cons, of course, that, you know, sometimes they are a bit too shocked, <laughs> you know, about, um, it is, it's so new to them sometimes that it takes time for them to, to under, get to understand how the music works, you know, mm -hmm. but, so, but that's, that's the thing that we've, we've been doing, you know, all these years. So, um, I think in 2015, um, when we did this um, caution opening concert, um, I think um, uh, we received invitation from China to go there, to go to uh, Nanning Music Festival. Mm -hmm. I think they, they yeah. call it. Um, um, China, ASEAN China, or something, yeah, right? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. so, um, so after that, we, we, we was invited. We were invited to perform there in 2016 at I think that's a great opportunity for us. And I think it's something that we do quite well, you know, playing new music, maybe because that's always at the, at the start of the semester. This is a fantastic oh, idea. Uh, yeah. And so, I mean, as I, I told you, there's pros and cons in, in, in this kind of starting um, the, 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 the season in, with, with new music, with you know, freshmen and, and, and younger people in there. So um, sometimes after that concert, I need to take some more time to get their basics back a little bit, that, yep. that have more time to really tune the major chord or something like that, you know. Get into the sound, get yeah. into yeah, the, yeah, the good habits. Of. Uh, can I ask for the Mahito Wind Orchestra, like what are, what's the usual age group? Is it like the, you said freshmen and, and sophomores or yeah, it's we, across the map? Yeah, we, we uh, across the, 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 the college actually. So we did, we did some auditions, you know, and we, it really depends on the years because some if some years we had let's say we had a lot of students we can make two groups so we can focus that the wind orchestra is the group that focus on um, training the more experienced students and play a uh, more difficult repertoire while the second group is more like a, a training back to basic uh -huh. no group um, sometime some years um, where the number of students are not not enough to make two groups. Maybe it's, it's better to, to group uh, you know, all the students together, but that's also supposed some challenge in selecting repertoire and the, the approach a little bit. So it, it really varied you know, on, 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 on the situation of the student number. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, can I ask if like, for example, the incoming um, freshmen, and do they have experience playing such pieces in their, maybe their high school wind band? Or is or is the repertoire choices in high school completely different from um, perhaps kind of your programming, which is more new music focused? Yeah, my and from the first my, concert. yeah from my knowledge, I think the they are quite quite a bit different, you no, know, quite a bit different. And I think the uh, most of the high school bands um, they have their own style of programming. I mean, that it depends on 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 the trends, you know, during those. Let's say those five years may be there, you know. Uh, so uh, if if there's some competition that require them to do some piece, and that might influence them in terms of mm -hmm. electing repertoire. Um, but in terms of new music, probably not a lot. I see. Yeah. I see. Great. So I I guess this is a kind of a perfect uh, segue into the first piece for tonight, which is uh, Mantras by Narong. Yeah. <sighs> Narong Pangchan. Yes. Um, and uh, could you tell us a little bit about mantras before we play it for yeah, the audience? So, yeah, so well, let me say that I we, we picked two pieces for you, um, right? Um, you know, for for this this live, and um, the first piece, this mantra is um, by Narong Pancharan. He's actually he's now currently the dean of 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 Mahidol College of Music, but his background was composer, and he received a number of you know big awards. And recently, he just won Guggenheim um, Prize, so that's quite a big thing. Um, this is the piece that, um, no, I actually performed this in CCM also. Yeah, uh, with maybe, Alex. Yeah, yeah, with Alex Mack, right? Yeah. And um, so this is the piece for, as you can see, the instrumentation, you know, with with um, wind ensemble. So basically, it's like orchestral wind sections, right? The instrumentation. 
um, plus piano. Single clarinet? Yeah, sing yeah single sing clarinet. Mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. Um, I tried also with double clarinet. It, it's fine. It's fine too, but maybe at some moment you need to, you need to organize a little bit so that, that the balance um, is, is good with the other wind. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so this is the concerto that, um, we can start with the word mantras. Mantras is, mantras is the plural form of the word mantra, a Sanskrit word that you know, it's like um, a group of syllable or um, chanting, you know, that is believed in Buddhism and Hinduism to have some um, magical spell. You know, that's, that's, that's the idea. And then I think um, he composed this based on the idea of, of mantra or some, some, some magical power that can help healing um, the mind or the earth or the most, you know, healing physically and mentally. And so this piece is like, you know, composed, constructed of several types of mantras. And what is very um, interesting here is that he fused some Thai um, folk music in here also. By folk, I mean, you know, usually when we use the word traditional, tradi Thai traditional music is, you know, mainly it, it, it really usually implies the um, music in, in royal palace, in, in the central part of the country. You know, while Thailand is actually com constructed of, um, you know, northern, northeastern, eastern, western, and southern. And, you know, each region really owns its own um, kind of culture. You know, also in terms of arts and music also. So this is the, in, the this concerto was influenced um, by the music of the northeastern part of Thailand. You know, they, the, the region is really close to Lao, if, if, if that um, help you, you know, uh, locate. Orientate. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, the, um, the, the music here, um, you know, the composer once told me that it's inspired by the music that is played, you know, in accompaniment to um, the ritual, you know, the, the folk ritual that um, the villagers want to ask um, God for some rain during summer, you know, because it's the region that they do a lot of, of agriculture. And if there's no rain, if it's too hot, they cannot do agriculture. And so there's this ritual that, that is right, that, that they, they put the cat in a cage and they, they put it on procession and they do dance and singing and stuff like that to, you know, to ask for the rain. You know, they believe that they, to, in order to ask for the rain, they should um, find the animal that has the color, that, that it, the animal color that, um, that is close, closest to the rain. So they, they need to find the, the cat that, you know, a bit gray in color. Wow. Yeah, but they don't. They don't do anything to the cat. The cat is free to go after. I, I don't think so. I don't think they kill it already. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's that's safe. So we're gonna we're not gonna play from the beginning of the piece. We're gonna play from the middle of the piece. Yes. Uh, due yes. to time constraints. Yes. So um, here is uh, mantras. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Thank you. 
You know that final altissimo note is you know I think it's it's challenging to the players because you know I remember when we did audition you know to seek soloists at CCM I think one of one of one of the, the thing that the, the jury asked is that you know you need to play that altissimo so that we we can confirm that you can play the piece and sometimes I remember that that I did this piece I think two or three times and. And in some rehearsals, you know, the soloist will not be able to hit that that altissimo note at the very end. <laughs> right. I I mean, I I was listening to your recording with CCM this afternoon, yeah. and I I really miss I really miss that band. Yeah. I really miss the CCM. I mean, that's a great ensemble. I mean, I I I mean, all the brass players, you know, we hang out with them so much, but I mean, right. they really deliver. The brass sound in that recording was really. Like yeah. powerful and impressive, and uh, this online you can find on YouTube if, if you like. Find yeah, I will. I will put the link up when I put out the video, and um, yeah, that reminds me of very good times at CCM. Right. <laughs> um, so you mentioned a little bit about a, a Thai traditional instruments, a uh, traditional music that inspire right. mantras. Right. Um, could you tell us a little bit about it while while I pull that out? Maybe maybe we can look at the score together. Yeah, sure. Uh, maybe we can look at um, measure maybe ninety nine. Sure. Uh, before I do that, I just want to say a quick hello to uh, Pia Wat who's tuning in, and also Emily. Yeah, that was really incredible, really wonderful piece. Uh, here it is, ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. And you can find the score online too. On uh, um, on presser company, and they have uh, these kind of perusal scores on issue that you can you know check them out. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit because it's super small. Yeah. So if you um, notice both solo lines, the melodic line, sometimes in the accompaniment to this, this is the figure that um, sort of reflect the kind of um, northeastern folk music. 
that you know, it's played on the instrument called can. This is really, this resembles the Japanese cho. If, 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 if you've seen one, it's like, it's constructed of a number of, of, um, of tubes, you know, small tubes attached together. So when you blow into it, it produce um, multiple sound at the same time. And so the way they play it really, you know, it really produces this kind of shape into the and you know, the, the this kind of arpeggio up and down, up and down. Um, and it sometimes, you know, if, if you see any any pedal notes that also reflects the way that the the, the player of the instrument um, performs the sound also. Sometimes there are some some pedals in the sound in the chords. Mm -hmm. And this um, saxophone section line. This is taken from the um, dance rhythm of the northern northeastern folk song, also. So it's the combination of you know of it, it really shadows, yeah, this line. It really shadows mm -hmm. the folk music here. Mm -hmm. You know, and the piano line, piano line, really, it's constructed from you know pentatonic um, notes. Yeah. Mm. Right. Shall we shall we listen a little bit to the clip you sent me? Because yeah, I sure. think that will put everything in context for our listeners. Satu, satu, tu ka ma muni ma ko peng nang meo, ma pen sum pen teo he nang meo tuai fa. ยอนว่าซุ่มภูคานามขาดหน้าดินแห่งไหนทนต่อไปใจขาดแท้นั่งแมวแก่ซอยในเด้อซาทุซาทุซาทุเนี่ย so this is the instrument that you're talking about let me just rewind a little bit yeah this one yeah this one it has a very very reedy quality to it right yeah, so and um, I think this piece really, really extracts the sound and the scales, which is ma mainly, mainly pentatonic. But it's different from, from I mean, you can, you can probably tell the difference that it doesn't sound like, like uh, Chinese. Chinese pentatonic. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. But it's, I, think, I think it's the way the notes are arranged. That's, that's, that's why it's different. Um, wow. And you know, at the solo line, also the, the the way that the music sometimes the notes are leap in the wide range, and that also reflects the style. It, it helps together create the the you know, the pedal sound and the and, and the, the folk type melody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this piece, you know, is very interesting. That this piece later was um, um, reorchestrated and make it into orchestra version with double saxophone. Meaning that, that the one player played two saxophones and then, um, so they switched the instruments. Um, I, is, if, if my memory serves me right, it, it's um, soprano and alto saxophone. And then, so in the cadenza, so they played two saxophones at the same time. So they put, put two mouthpieces. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's called this Maha is, Mantras. You can find it on YouTube also. Yeah, which means bigger mantras, right? Yeah, bigger mantras, right, right. <laughs> yeah, bigger mantras. <laughs> 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 because it means better. Right. Two saxophones at the same time. Well, this is really incredible. Yeah, and, um, and this this is with orchestra. With orchestra. It became the the um, required piece for the saxophone competition ho um, hosted at the college by uh, Jean Marie Londex, which mm -hmm. he he's been the host um, with us for you know e every three years. You know, you, we're gonna do this competition, and that year, um, the required piece for the final round was this Mahamantra's piece. Fabulous. And I think like the sex I remember community. A, of number, uh, a number of, of sex players, including our peers from NEC and CCM also. I, I, I met them here in, in Thailand. And then you know, some of them told me that, you know, I, I use your, um, I listen to your video clip for study. <laughs> 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 for study. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's a great recording. And, and there's a real push by the saxophone community, at least in Asia, to really do something fantastic. You know, the connection between Thailand, Singapore, um, and even Korea with, with Brandon doing, you know, some yeah, yeah. really fantastic stuff there and doing this whole saxophone, you know, Asia symposium thing. It's really f amazing. All right, Brandon, he already visited. 
Thailand for I think two or three times already. We haven't met yet. So Brandon, if you're watching ah, okay. <laughs> this video, so next time we need we need to catch up. Okay. Yeah, I was in Korea. Uh, I've been so I think, and and there was once we went out for barbecue with Brandon and uh, and uh, another clarinet player whose name escapes me now, and it was it was a wonderful time, uh, mm-hmm. catching up with them. Uh, going back to this idea of traditional music, is is traditional music something that everybody grew up with in Thailand, or it de- depends? Yeah, it's it's something that start to, you know, um, distant from us. Know, these days um, it's it still exists I mean in speaking of daily life it exists in the traditional um, rites for sure you know sometimes when you go to um, to uh, you know some sometimes the at, at certain age the, 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 the boys the, the men needs to become monk right sometimes they, they yeah. kind of music um, in um, in in other pro- uh, other provinces sometimes it's really the integral part of their their folk rights but we hear this kind of music the the folk brass band is something that probably still plays prominent part in some province you know um, we all studied some of them a bit um, during our primary school you know I remember studying um, traditional dance mm-hmm. like it's actually dance um, in the traditional way um, I study also some Thai um, traditional music also. You know, in at in our cu- curriculum at, at the college um, here at Mahidon, we required all freshman students to study um, the the traditional instrument. You know, everyone oh. like, at least like two semesters um, to learn about them a little bit. Wow, that's a really really wonderful thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that not everyone get the chance to learn it but but in daily life at, at some point we we hear them receive them and just to keep that tradition going it's really a wonderful thing yeah great i think we should probably move on to the second piece of for tonight which is um a piawat louis la Prasset. good job yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh, <laughs> lux arden and uh, can you give us a little bit of an introduction before we play the piece? You know, we are a good friend. I mean, I, I know him since he was still a middle school kid. Um, but at somehow, I mean, he used to be a trombone player. At, at somehow, at some point, he became this um, really excel, accelerate in his composing career. And then and at some point, it was crazy that everything he wrote just won some prize, some kind of prize, <laughs> you know. And so... Um, so I, we really, I, I was drawn to his music a lot. Um, so at Mahidon, I actually played quite a lot of his music, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so this one, I considered one of his, well, one of my favorite pieces you know, produced mm-hmm. by him. So, um, I mean, I, I don't want to say that it's his, his best piece because you're going to argue with me, right? He's watching <laughs> right now. Um, so um, this is the piece that um, there, there, it, there exists three versions. Ah, okay. Um, first, when about the score. yeah, so in 2015, I talked to him that you know if you could write something for us, and so the, he produced um, the piece for woodwinds and brass only, so no percussion in the first version. Ah, so, okay. So um, so it's like basically um, a triple winds, you know, I mean the orchestral wind sections with, without percussion, and then there's a no versions with saxophones and without saxophones. So it, mm-hmm. it might create some difference in, in tone color a little bit, but essentially it's the same thing. And then in 2017, um, I asked him to revisit the piece a little bit to add some percussion. And so he, he um, did some amendment to the piece, you know, add some, some harmony t- to it um, you know, within the same structure. And it became, it became this version, 2017 version of um, the piece called Lux Ardens, um, name in Latin, you know, translated to the burning light. So this is like a interpretation um, to give us the um, physical um, sound of reimagining the, the lights, the sparkles, 
um, the music, the, 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 the fire that burns and dies and reborn. It's very dramatic, <laughs> you know, and it's um, introduced a lot of, of interesting colors, I think, if you can see in this performance notes already on the right side of the score, and you'll see the instruction that, for example, you know, um, use brass players use the, um, the hands on the harmon mutes, um, you know, play on the vibrato. Wah, 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 wah. Yep. And, you know, if you listen to a lot of P watch music, you know, you're gonna hear a lot of, a lot of brace notes. I think that's one of these trademarks, <laughs> using a lot, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of, of brace notes that produce quite interesting sounds, I think. Mm -hmm. And the, the trills and the, the overtones, undertone stuff, and the air sound, of course, the air sounds. Um, yeah, great. Let's jump into it. The score is a little, a little bit small, so I apologize to our audience in in uh, advance. Um, so I'm just gonna go do what I can. Um, so hang in there. <laughs> I know it's difficult to see. Yeah, it's performed okay. by uh, our group. This is the, per the version with uh, percussion. Mm -hmm.
Fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. Really, really something fantastic. I mean, I love how it's it's so f the colors is so fresh. It's yeah. it's such a textural piece. Right. But it's still it's still so recognizable. You know, each section. Sometimes textural pieces they just become, you know, you have this atmosphere and that's about it. But this is very mm -hmm. very. Um, you can touch it, you know, it's very vivid. It, it has a direction. I think the energy that established from the beginning, it, I mean, it, you know, it's the, the notes always leads into the next destination. And so that also um, make both the challenge in terms of perform, performing it also is that it's, it's very important that you need to get everything right, you know, especially the energy and the color. You know, sometimes that canonic um, crescendo for example, that you just need to get the right balance and the right energy. Passing you know? into the next section, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and, and we, that's really important. And you know, all these small details really affect the, the whole piece. So I think, um, but it's something fun also you know, doing rehearsal that, that you need to find a way to explain to your students, also that's one thing, and um, to to control, to maintain the energy of the piece you know, until it goes to it's you no know, hit point. Yeah. You know, and this beautiful micro polyphony. Um, also very beautiful and fresh, you know, as you say. Taking from Ligeti. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. You can you can you can think of, of some influence from Ligeti. Yeah. No, this is really um I mean like wind band music, for example, it's sometimes it's um a lot of what people are exposed to are kind of the traditional and the melody and harmony. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when they get to, to play something like that, it's completely different out of their expectation. How, how have your students' reactions been, you know, at the beginning and, you know, how, how is it at the end of the whole process? No, at, at the point where we, where we did this piece, um, they're already familiar with, with this kind of idiom already with the other pieces that we played. So um, that's not too much of a surprise, but it's just that we 
um, need to you need to find the right word or find the right way to explain or to ask them for the right color. You know, sometimes we sometimes we seek the color together and and have them experiment with something. And I think it it took some time for everyone to to catch up with with the idea of, of the piece. Um, but I always try to to ask them to see um, beyond single or or just two bars. You know, I want them to Say, for example, we mark the hit point, for example, like in movie, but see that this is the destination that we all need to maintain the energy up until this point, and then we can change the direction or change the, the level of energy, for example. You know, and sometimes, and sometimes we, re we rehearsed, you know, sometimes if you feel like we micro rehearse a little bit, that we rehearse, we single just a bar or two, and so that they understand, you know, this, this small rhythm that play at different time, but it's, it's, it's all, you know, together, you know, weave some kind of texture you know, so that they, they hear what's happening. And so that it's also, we need to single out some, some, some lines so that they hear what, what are they doing? Like they, they are doing this note that is interacting with some other people in the ensemble, for example. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you when you're playing in such a textural piece, it's easy to forget that you're that everybody has to be at the same level for the texture right. to be there. Otherwise, it doesn't uh, work well together. Right, right, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And and I think the a lot of the extended techniques are very, um, very uh, friendly entry level. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's <laughs> not too crazy that people just kind of give up. But it's it's good, you know. They have to be exposed to these techniques, you know. They are techniques that they will use for a lot of other pieces, and still, it's still so um, well used in in this work. I remember you introduced this piece to me. I think a, a theme and variations, um, and I remember oh, listening to uh, it. And I was uh, green sleeves, right? Yes, green sleeves. Yeah, right. you know that's that, that's the that's a funny background um, of it. Is that it's it's the year, and I think it's two thousand sixteen, where um, I did, you know, I think it's, it's the year where um, it's 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death. So I curate a concert that based on the theme of Shakespeare that, you know, that we want to perform the, you know, I, I wrote in the program note that we wanted to create a, a dialogue between Shakespeare and musical world. For example, um, let's explore together 400 years past after Shakespeare's death. So how how Shakespeare influenced the musical world or how musical world view Shakespeare's work for it. So, so we played, you know, piece that range from uh, Renaissance music, um, the piece that, you know, uh, the name is Kevin, you know, the um, Illyrian dance, for example, the piece that inspired by, you know, try that, try to imagine, you know, the, the, the land of Illyria, if it really exists in, 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 in real world, how would their music sound like, for example, that's, Illyrian dance, you know, or we played excerpts from Alfred Reed's Othello, you know, and and even West Side Story Suite um, transcribed for for band. And then I I think I thought then that you know we need more modern piece that that reflects the the Renaissance source, you know. So I asked um, Pierre Watt to to wrote to write the um, variations on Queen's Sleeves, and it became something magnificent. Yeah, it, it is fantastic. That, do you know if these pieces have are played a lot uh, outside of Thailand? Um, some of his pieces get performed. Um, oh, but specifically his wind band pieces. Um, I th I think there are there are pieces that he he wrote and won won some award also, you know. And there are some pieces that he wrote and was get performed in England because he studied um, at the Royal College. Yeah, and. I hope to introduce um, this kind of work more into into international um, regions so that they they know this music. Yeah, absolutely. I hope um, that people in Singapore listening to this and really finding you know such incredible stuff. Uh, two very different composers, Narong and Pia Wat, but two extremely unique and. Uh, individual Southeast Asian voices. Yeah, and I you know. mentioned also that these two gentlemen was the um, pioneer of the music festival also because Narong has been the founder 
of the TICF or Thailand International Comes and Festival since mm -hmm. um, 2004, I think. So it's been like 15 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, and then last year, Piwa just started um, his own festival. And this one is a bit different because it's the, the, the festival that integrates the, um, the, the work, the production, um, creative works from not only composers, but also from uh, visual artists, um, composers, filmmakers, and so it all together create you know the the arts event that you know that that several um, uh, kinds of arts you know come come together and join to produce works. Yeah, and that's super exciting. Yeah, so basically, in in the country, we have at least these two um, events that that quite um, different and and at the same time interesting and really helps um, us in terms of new music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just looking up his uh, um, his works, and he has his own ensemble, and he's like a triple triple threat conductor, trombonist, and composer. Right. Right. <laughs> no, it's just really fantastic. And I would love to meet him someday. Um, and I I think I remember if I don't remember wrongly, I think a couple of um, the Singaporean composers are also going to Thailand. If let's say you know if everything works out. Um, to be in the festival, I believe it was Emily and also with Yu Ting. So, you know, this is really wonderful that, you know, this kind of the relationships that we build, uh, especially within Southeast Asia, is, is stronger and stronger. Yeah, it's, it's good to, you know, you know it's, it's actually our our goal also, our, at least my goal, that in, in this festival, because our win ensemble is playing, always perform on the first night of the festival. Mm -hmm. Opening um, show, so um, you know I try to, to commission um, friends or Thai composers to to write at least you know we have at, at least one Thai work um, in, in in the opening concert so that that helps promoting or get get the composers to write something so that we produce more more music that hope to be future repertoire you no know, for yeah. Win Ensemble also. And Win Ensemble is such a wonderful vehicle for new music. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and I it's mean, kind of ensemble that is, you know, it's ubiquitous in, in the country also, that it's, it's, um, it's, it's everywhere. I mean, I mean, every high school has, has um, been bad, you know, but not orchestra. So, so a lot of, of majority of, of the kids in high school play, you know, wind instruments. And so, you know, it's good for everyone to have more music to play. And maybe this is a topic for next time, but I, I'm always wondering about like new music for younger ensembles. Yeah. I think that's that's an area that you know could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that that maybe area that that we together can talk about. Because then they get exposed to some of the techniques, but you know, but the 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 demands are not that high, and so they don't they're still able to do and, and right. perform. Right. And, you know, uh, you know, speaking of which, I'm thinking now of the piece like you know Michael Colgrass Old Churches. That's the piece that um, I, I conducted a lot, you know, very often this piece for younger ensembles because I mean at the college we also have um, the pre-college, which is the high school level. And sometimes when when we want to introduce them to contemporary music or new music, um, this piece is actually quite wonderful because you know, it's based on Gregory Chant. So there there's something that they're familiar with. But at the same time, it includes some um, basic passage of improvisation mm. uh, so that really, really, really helps them, you know, um, get introduced and get familiarized with the more uh, newer sounds. Yeah, and unconventional, um, you know, playing away from the score. Right, right, right. Yeah. Now we can talk more in a future session. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for, for sharing an hour of wonderful music and insights uh, with us. And also thank you for the audience for joining in. And um, before we end, I'd like to ask, uh, are there any interesting upcoming projects you'd like to share with us, you know, besides this wonderful thing that you told us about in the middle of Bangkok? Yeah, so um, we are now, you know, you know of all this um, pandemic situation. So um, in Thailand now, we are Release from lockdown already, um, and the live shows just started to get back on stage. 
um, not 100%, but, but slowly getting there. So um, some orchestras already performed with um, some social distancing in the audience, you know, so audience feel uh, apart. Um, so, TPO? Um, and, and TPO is starting um, in, you know, actually it's the end of our, of our season, so we're going to, after four months, we're going to do season finale. <laughs> season oh, finale. Okay. Uh, um, next month already, so we do two concerts, and myself will conduct a um, Beethoven Symphony Number no. Two because nice. you know original originally the the Thailand Philharmonic um, planned to do a Beethoven Festival because this is um, the yeah right yeah and right. then yeah, the, the 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 pandemic stopped us from that. So in this two concerts from from for the finale, so I think I I want to do the second symphony because I think it's it's the Symphony that you know if, if you if you love the three five and seven and nine so this may be something that you haven't heard um, very often um, so I wanted to do this and then um, yeah we have also trumpet concerto by Haydn and our principal trumpet will will call it and open with Devotion Wind Serenade um, open nice. cast to uh, make it make some fun you know <laughs> yeah and um so and hopefully that if the situation gets better we can have more more um projects um you know, for everyone in, in bangkok to, to join and see great i look forward to visiting you again someday i think the last time i was there was the ticf last year yes if i'm not <laughs> wrong yeah, yeah yeah last year right last year yeah great. and hopefully i get to spend more time there uh the next time i go up Mm -hmm. hey, thank Great. you for having me tonight. No, and thank you for sharing so much with us. And uh, I'd like to wish everybody a good night. Uh, next week will be quite exciting for unboxing new music. Uh, we will have our guest uh, for episode 19. It will be the music director of the Singapore Chinese Orchestra, uh, uh, Maestro Ye Tong, who will share with us about uh, Nanyang music, which is a kind of genre that you know he helped create um, for Chinese orchestra in Singapore and that's going to be uh, really interesting so I hope to see you next week and thank you again once again to Tana Po and uh, have a good night everyone bye bye